From Shaitan the Akos, I bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only person that should be worshipped and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to be upon our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companion, his household and all Muslim Ummah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and you are welcome to another fresh episode of Nasrat Half Hour. Inshallah today our focus is going to be on agriculture. We are narrowing down to the role women play in agriculture in Nigeria. And inshallah in the studio I have veterans in the studio to shed light on this issue, on this topic we have brought forth. To my right hand side, I have Alahaja Simbias as Bala Jobi, member board of trustees, NASA, also a retired permanent secretary, Minister of Agriculture, Lagos State, and also a fellow of Fishery Society of Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And to my left, I have another veteran. Alahaja Suweba Kupolati, National Empowerment Secretary, NASPA, also an assistant director in the Department of Fisheries, Federal Ministry of Agri and Rural Development, and a member of Fisheries Fishery Society of Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's more new that the Nigerian economy is going through a lot. That is why direction, as I say, is now same day on agriculture and the importance and the significance of this topic we are discussing this morning on agriculture. I had that really start with you, ma'am. Agriculture. Women from time immemorial we've known they are always involved in agriculture. But these days do we still have that strength? To what extent are the women still involved in agriculture? Thank you. As you know, agriculture is the art of science of cultivating the land to produce food and rare animals for the population to feed on. So generally, both men and women, because we all need food, so men and women are involved in agriculture because it is a traditional occupation. In Nigeria, 70% of the labor force in cultivation of land, that is growing cassava, granules, potatoes, tomatoes, are women. Also, agriculture involves cultivating the land, processing the product, and then marketing. These are the three key areas where women play a prominent role. In the cultivation of land, growing crops, 70% of the labor force are women. In processing, 60% of the labor force in processing food in Nigeria are women. In marketing of the food, 50% of the people who market and cultural products are women. Thank you very much, ma'am. That means women are really involved in agriculture in Nigeria. Well involved, very well involved. Alhamdulillah. I'd like to ask for on the area where women actually do with the work as culture. We all know that we have sustained farming, we have capital intensive farming. To what extent do women go into large-scale farming. Thank you very much. Um, in women, the role of women in agriculture, it entails a lot of um, effort and the capital, I mean, the plantation, large-scale farming and involves capital intensive. And um, knowing very well that in Nigeria, particularly in the rural area, the women do not have access to financing, Women do not have access to land where they can do large scale farming. So basically, more women are into um, homesteads, planting of um, vegetables, cassava, maize, pepper, 
particularly the ones that they can easily get to the market and sell, and then also the ones that they can easily use in the home to um, feed their children, family members and all that. So we have very few women going into areas of large-scale farming, particularly the areas of export. We're looking at cotton, we're looking at rubber, cocoa, and so on and so forth. So you don't find plenty of women into these areas. Men are majority in this area, but you have very few women in the large-scale farming. Mm -hmm. So now that we have women that are not very in large number in large-scale farming, can we now confidently say women make impact in agriculture? Yes, um, women effort impact is great in agriculture. Like Alaja has earlier said that 70% of the farming population are women. That tells you that women is contributing a lot to agriculture. Women are into addict production, women are into utilization, processing and marketing. So every aspect of agric, whether you're looking at um, um, fish farming, you're looking at crops, you will find women there. And women contribute a lot, not only in Nigeria, everywhere. And you find women also into um, livestock rearing as well. You have poultry, you have aquaculture, you have um, small animals like sheep, goats in, the, in, 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 in their homes, they rear that as well. So women is very, very high number of women and involved in agriculture. In agriculture. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, ma'am. Alhamdulillah, women make impact. Do women have any challenges or constraints as far as agriculture is concerned? First of all, I think we should distinguish between women as entrepreneurs in agriculture, I mean those who have lack who have farms on their own. But in agriculture, agriculture is a labor-intensive uh, enterprise. A lot of women in farming need people to do the farming. Women can come in and help you do the farm and get money for it. And the women can come in to have it and get money for it. So they are contributing to the labor force in agriculture, which is very, very essential. That is a contribution. That does not mean that a woman does not own maybe a plot or two of land in um, in in, surround, in a surrounding where she can with her children plant the maize and look at it in the same time. So in that way she is an entrepreneur. But on the for a large scale farming where you need large hectares of land, you need things like tractor and mechanization, you don't have some women there. Maybe maybe one percent of the people who are into large scale farming, who have access to loans from the bank, are engaged as women. Majorly, they are engaged in small scale farming at the back of the yard, and they provide the labor force. And the small scale farmers, the accumulation is the result of what they eat in the market, because one ton of gari uh, from one woman here. Yeah, in a village, you can have a village of kind about five tons, the next village another ten tons, and the accumulation of it is the agricultural product in Nigeria. These sufficient farmers have been sufficient this country for eight long. Thank you very much, ma'am. Considering the economic situation now, and we are all talking about agriculture, and look at the constraints that women are having. In what area, how can these women be given that what they need, the support to make it better? Uh, thank you very much. I think if you recall the 34 um, priority activities of government, this government for 2016, um, government has decided to diversify the economy and government is largely looking into the area of agriculture, particularly to create wealth and engage the youth and women in agri-produce. So um, the women can contribute a lot if their support from government for women. Women have challenges in the area of accessing financing. Before you can go into big capital um, agric business, you must have big capital layout. You must acquire land. We also have challenges, women have challenges in acquiring land. I don't know if we have 
explain it before, but when you travel, you find that in the villages, in the rural areas, you find men being given large areas of land, and the women are just given just a small, tiny pot because the women, they believe always the women do with it. You know, but these are the challenges that women are facing. They don't have access to land. They don't have access to financing. They don't have access to training. When it comes to training, you know, training is very, very important. You have to build a capacity of the um, capacity building for women to be able to know what kind of seeds to use, what kind of fertilizer to use, the technology to use to improve in their food as it's business. So the the society focuses more on men and leaving women out of it. But we have realized that these days women are very, very important. Government has to give provide special or specific policies specific policies for women towards improving the contribution of women in a break. There must be, um, because even if a woman wants to apply for credit facilities in the bank, they will ask for collateral. Women, most men do not have buildings, they don't have land properties, so they are not able to access financing in the bank. These are the areas that women need to look into. And apart from what Anada has said, I imagine those areas where women are looking. What other when finding the cooperative? Is there any way it can be used as a cushion effect to uh, to tackle these issues? Thank you very much. Yes. Fortunately, I worked in the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative for 35 years, yes. and the even even cooperative union started with a farmers group. So. The issue, um, it was it's a farming enterprise that makes the world for pretty popular, at least in Lagos State, where I believe we have more than 5,000 different groups. We call them a great multi-purpose society. In Lagos State, we have encouraged the development of a cooperative society. A cooperative society is a group of people, 10, 12, who have the same common interest and who, are, who group themselves together to help themselves. So if you have a group of people, it can be a family, it can be friends, it can, it can be neighbors. If, if you know we want to do an exercise, especially family, you can come together and then register a society. Go to the Minister of Public, they will tell you the condition, you will register. You pay what you call share capital, you start lending with oh, 500 naira or whatever you agree. But that, that it has its own test. And once you form the corporate society, one of the advantages is that you can have an access to benefits from government. From, as far as legal state is concerned, the organized training for corporate society. And if there are benefits of pro government programs, the, the, the first part of call are the corporate society. They give them training on the particular job they are doing. Projects like Padama projects are targeted towards cooperative society. Most of it are farmer based. And it, sometimes government even assist in selling of cooperative products. In Alausa there they have what they call the farmer's mass. It was started um, a long time ago when I was there when we call it uh, agrosport. We allow people from cooperatives to bring their products from the rural area to sell it here at the we are better price than what they can sell. So they bring fresh garlic, fresh fish, and they sell. And I think they have translated them into, there are so many agro, um, agro maps all over the state now. That is one of the areas. One of the ways women can come together and benefit is to form themselves into cooperative society. One of the thriving agricultural businesses that women are involved in is the poultry. Is there or are there other areas that you can identify that will help women, those who are not yet involved in the project that are coming? Thank you very much. Um, there are several areas that women can go into outside the poultry business. Do you recall that the part, in the past government, the then Honorable Minister of Agric, um, that is the president of the African Development Bank now, emphasized on value addition. Value addition because they, uh, they, they try to encourage farmers to put value into their produce, not really the raw material. 
For example, for this um, aquaculture fish farming, when the fish is harvested, you can process it, you can smoke it, you can extract the oil. So these are value additions. This will attract more money for the um, for the farmers. So women can also go into aquaculture. They can go into processing. They can go into feed of uh, the fish. They can go into the feed fish seed, which are the fingerlings. They can also go into um, exporting this product. In my office, we issue out. Um, export permits for processed smoked fish to the EU country on the condition, on, on the condition that the farmer has fulfilled the EU standard requirements. So women can go into exportation of smoked fish. They can also go into fish production locally. They can also <coughs> rear the fingerlings to the several areas. Women can go into tomato. We can see that these days tomato is very, very expensive. Very expensive yeah. And now that government is also looking into agric seriously, right? We will encourage our women to also have tomato plantation. I believe this they can grow two, three, four, five times in a year, particularly with the the new seeds that we have. They can have multiple harvesting of um, of tomatoes. They can also also go into vegetables. A lot of us now are going um, vegetable, we want to eat less of um, fertilized products. So we're looking into eating vegetables that are not grown with fertilizer. So women can also go into that. A lot of fruits also can also be um, planted by women. So there are several areas that women can go into and they will com comfortably make some good money and they can also export some of these products. Government wants more foreign exchange to come in Nigeria. Government is exporting people, uh, I mean, encouraging people to export agri produce. So there's a lot of opportunities for women, and I believe that this government is prepared to also support women. As much as they are prepared to support the youth, they are also going to support women. So it is we women that we should call ourselves, encourage ourselves, and create awareness for women to go more into agri business. And there will not be regret, inshallah. Alam for our means. Alhamdulillah. Ma, you have spoken extensively on the low output from women who are into farming. Could it be linked to the fact that the majority of them are illiterate? Or they don't have access to that information or technology to make them do more in agriculture? Thank you very much. The low output from women. It's not probably due to the um, lack of training. We said women are working on the top to end level. That means somebody working on the one in of land. So generally, the output will be low. But one of the problems in agriculture is training. They need to be trained in the use of um, modern technology. And I'm aware that in most states, if they are Minister of Agriculture is functioning well, they are what we call extension officers who are meant to go to the to the uh, farmer, wherever they are, and give them the technical knowledge. For example, in Lagos State, we have a program called Ball U. It's aired every Friday between 6.30 to 7, and it's meant to educate farmers. It tells you what type of seed, they tell you how to get the seed, they tell you what technology is going on, and they even give you the names of officers. If the women can avail themselves of this, that would be a good idea. But nowadays, as women, so we should be, like, try to find out more about what we are doing. The area of, I'm using, and I'm sure with the extension officers and even agriculture, has gone beyond um, all traditional methods. If I take an example of Lagos State, I don't think there's an area in Lagos State where they are using the low yield cassava um, cassava plants. Most most farmers, at least ninety percent of farmers, even women, are using the new um, cassava crop that is available through technology. Seeds are available for sale. Government in most states, even 
in uh, Lagos State. They give out fertilizers as subsidized waste to people. If the, the only the, uh, thing is that you must either link yourself to an office, to the agric office, or be part of a group. That is why we are emphasizing the issue of being in a cooperative. Once you are in a cooperative, you will be registered. Automatically, they will tell you what facilities are available. So that can increase the output of the farmer. But if they have more land, they have more capital, women can do more. Thank you very much, Ma. Another, maybe look at those areas that women have comparative advantage in agriculture. Thank you very much. I want to strongly recommend that more women should go into aquaculture, fish farming. Mm -hmm. This is because um, we have the demand for fish is so huge and the supply is little. I know that um, from record, Nigeria is number one importer of fish mm -hmm. in Africa. Number one importer of fish in Africa and number five globally because Nigerians like to eat fish. And we have waters everywhere. We have the knowledge, we have everything. So I would want to encourage our women to go more into fish farming. And there are several stages of fish farming that they can also specialize in. Right. Like I said earlier on, they could farm the fish, they could sell them fresh from the farm, they could process them, they could smoke them, and they could also export them. And the market is there even if they don't want to export. So I think our women should, mostly women, women generally, should go more into fish farming. Many people are running away from eating beef, and there's a lot of benefits in eating fish. I don't know if you have anything to add to what you have said, but in addition to that, what is the Islamic perspective? to women in agriculture. Does Islam say anything about women getting involved in agriculture? Is it a wrong or is it a lie? This is agriculture is an halal business. Like I said, the first thing Allah created is the land. And then he put us there. He said we should fill the land. And he did not say for men, he said for all for the for mankind. So we should women women should be involved in agriculture. It's an egg log production. They are going to bring food to the family. So they must provide food by cultivating the land, planting crops for their family. The only area of uh, fortune in Islam is the raising of pigs. So, and, and where Islam makes eating of pork uh, around to us. And if you don't eat it, we should not raise it. So we should not buy it. Did not say it. Alhamdulillah. Do you have to add to the Islamic perspective to women taking part in agriculture? Um, yes, I just want to remind us that um, we have some women that are in Puda. Puda means women that are secluded, uh, they leave, they, they hardly go out in the daytime. So some of those women can also go into planting of vegetables in their courtyard, um, raising of animals, as she said and even aquaculture, like I said earlier on, and they can make some little money from all of those businesses. So we encourage our women to do a lot of this. When I remember that during the um, regime of um, former president, um, um, of Asanjo, he, um there was this slogan then, Operation Feed the Nation. Mm -hmm. I think women should also try to go into this kind of business now. We can farm um, vegetables within our com premises, our compound, we can do um, pepper, tomatoes, um, greens, we can do um, cassava, maize, bananas, oranges and all that and we can easily access and then harvest and then we can save money in those areas rather than going to buy and we can save money to um, feed our friends, our family members and also Even get some nation. Exactly, and also feed the nation as well. Alhamdulillah, you can hear it at all. Women, we have enough, enormous prospects in agriculture. Let's bring it down to our home, our society, NASA. Is there any way NASA has made any impact in the life of women as far as agriculture is concerned? Thank you very much. As part of efforts in NASA to get a woman gainfully employed, we have looked at the area of agriculture. And some few years back, 
who have, we had a link with the Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture, where we have run seminars on different types of areas where women can go in. We had the we were having the seminar regularly, and uh, it has been very result. We can boost up at least two or three societies for three societies of not first women, uh, Sabur and uh, uh, Takwa, who are engaged in fish farming. Some of them, they grow their fish, while some of them uh, smoke the fish, and uh, some of them market the fish. And they have their land, they have everything there. In fact, recently they had an access to a loan from the Bank of Industry to the tune of about one million as a society. And interestingly now, more of them are still coming up. Some of them who learn one or two things there are you are while utilizing the training. For instance, some of them are trained on fish processing. They go out to um, work for people who are farms who are not smoking. They engage them and you pay them at the kilo of fish that they smoke. And that's giving them a business. Alhamdulillah. So before we go, Alhaja, is there any way government needs to come in here to bring women to the landline? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think the um, area of government is to ensure that governments make policies that will support women in agriculture. Um, they should make the collateral for accessing credit very soft to enable women to have access to credit. They should also create training and capacity building through the maybe ADP or Minister of Agri in the state or other areas to train these women in latest technology in agriculture and also to provide the um, input, fertilizer, seed, and equipment to tilt the land you know, and to clear the land and harvesting easily as affordable for women so that we have a lot of women going into this. So there's a need for government to make this policy to help and support women in agriculture. Alhamdulillah, Bilana, me. definitely from all what we have said, women play a significant role in agriculture, not just in Nigeria, everywhere. I can be very sure of that. All women need is just the enabling environment, the conducive atmosphere, the enabling law, like she has said, to make women really flourish in this area of this sector. So we implore every woman out there, if you are involved in farming already, congratulations. May Allah wa ta'ala bless all your produce. I want to start from my humble veteran, Alhadad Simbiaz as Bala Jobi, Member Board of Trustees, NAFA. A retired permanent secretary, Minister of Agriculture, Legal State, a fellow of Fishery Society of Nigeria, Jezakum Lau Kairan Ma, Nelas Banu Watala, accept this and ask of Ibada and reward all what you have said today. Thank, thank you very much for coming to welcome your rewarding program. Thank you very much, ma'am. And to my immediate left, my mommy, another veteran in the home, Al Hajjad Rebat Kupolati, the National Empowerment Secretary, NASA, and Assistant Director in the Department of Fisheries, Federal Minister of Agri and Rural Development, also a member of Fishery Society of Nigeria. I think that Mula Ukaira, I said this as an act of Ibada and reward all our efforts. Thank you very much for coming on to the program. Thank you very much um, for the invitation. I just want to stress again to government that 70% of the farming population are women. Government needs to do something to assist our women so that we have, they can benefit and get the reward of their effort. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On oh, that, we call it a day on the program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Ya